Welcome to France 24. I'm Ketevan Gorgistani. In this edition of Reporters, we head to Germany, where sex work has been legal since 2002. Today, the country has about 28,000 sex workers and 2,000 businesses offering sexual services. Legalizing prostitution and pimping was meant to bring more security and autonomy to sex workers. But thousands more still work off the books, and studies show about 90 percent of sex workers operate under the control of a pimp. Anne Maillet and Nick Spicer sent this report on the two faces of Germany's sex work. Strip clubs, sex shops, and brothels. Prostitution in the St. Pauli district in Hamburg is out in the open, in your face, even a draw for tourists just come for a gander. The red light district and the raper ban, a street over a kilometer long, are an integral part of the city's reputation. The areas draw people from across Germany and the world. We will come from China, and in China we can't see, see anything like this. It's perfectly normal. It's always existed. It's okay. Anyone who wants to can. And in any case, we can never really prohibit it. It's the oldest profession in the world, so why stop it? It wouldn't make the streets safer. I'm convinced of that. We're in the largest prostitution zone in Europe. Oli Zariadka grew up here, and he's in his element. I love it. And I like to talk about what I've experienced here. I could give five-hour guided tours in St. Pauli. I have anecdotes to tell about every place. Oli has been involved in it all since he was a young man. He was a pimp until the birth of his three daughters. Now he's a tour guide, taking people through the district and its stories, indulging in explicit language and risque jokes. Back in the day, 200 women used to crowd into the basement of this establishment every day to wait for clients. 200 women in a basement. Back then, we called this a free-range breeding ground. Prostitution has always been tolerated in this port city. Since 2002, it has been legal throughout Germany. In one sense, St. Pauli showed the way, says Thierry Adke. In the 70s and 80s, prostitution was already tolerated everywhere. But over time, the new legislation allowed greater acceptance of sex workers in society. They're no longer looked at askance like before. And in St. Pauli, the girls and women who engage in prostitution are even highly respected. I don't believe we can go back. For over two decades, the authorities have considered prostitution to be a business like any other in Germany. Street walking, brothels, even the famous storefront sex workers on Herbert Street in Hamburg, everything is perfectly legal and regulated in detail. Berlin, the German capital, and home to a total of 85 brothels. Oral Marx is the boss in this one. He ran an escort service in the 1990s and takes his business seriously. This is a registration, and this is the card that proves there has been a health consultation. Anyone who wants to work here must have these two documents. Without them, it's impossible to work here. We could face legal action. On this card, the validity period of the registration is also indicated. You have to go back once a year, and for me, it will be in January. Elodie, her work name, is getting ready for the evening. During the day, she does her regular job, but comes here two or three times a week to boost her income. About 10 women take turns here day and night. Elodie says it's just a job like any other. She's been selling sexual services for just a few months. 
Wenn du dir diesen Probeausweis holst, When you register with the authorities, you also get a tax identification number. It's as simple as that. The same for social security. In short, I could sell pots, it would be the same procedure. So far, everything has gone well. The clients are also very respectful. Most of them ask for permission to touch me and are very kind. That evening, she meets with a regular client. He pays 150 euros for the hour, and she hands over 70 of that to Aurel. This establishment has eight rooms, and since 2017, it must follow a number of new rules. Each room must have access to daylight, so basement rooms are prohibited, and each room must be regularly ventilated. And and very important, each room must be equipped with an alarm button so that the girls can sound the alarm in case of problems. Aurel promotes the place and the women he calls his girls on the internet. Potential clients know what they can expect any time of day or night. If legalization has turned prostitutes into sex workers, it has also turned this former pimp into a businessman. The girls pay me for every hour spent in a room with a client, but in return I am responsible for promoting the establishment and attracting clients. The big advantage with legalization is that I pay taxes and work on a solid legal basis. So if I ever have problems with the mafia, for example, all I have to do is pick up my phone, and call the police, and they will take care of the problem. Germany has about 28,000 registered prostitutes and about 2,000 businesses offering sexual services. But behind the official facade of prostitution, there are also tens of thousands of women working off the books, like here in Berlin's Kirchfürstenstrasse. It's where we meet Gerhard Schönborn, and he details the reality of the place. Um, we're here in Kurfürstenstrasse in Berlin, the most infamous red light district in Germany, mainly because of Christian F. and her book, Me, Christian F., 13 years old, drug addict, prostitutes. Gerhard has been a social worker for about 15 years. His association helps women working in brothels and on the street. A few years ago, the municipality installed these public toilets for dual use to facilitate their work, according to the official explanation. It reeks of urine and feces. But it doesn't bother the clients. Sometimes they go in with two women. For Gerhard, the legalization of prostitution has changed nothing, quite the opposite. 20 years ago, it coincided with the opening of the European Union to Eastern European countries. Since then, the sector has been in constant search of fresh meat. With the war in Ukraine and the arrival of a million refugees in Germany, the number of Ukrainian prostitutes has significantly increased. Beim Einmarsch before Russia invaded Ukraine, only 24 Ukrainian women were officially registered as prostitutes in Berlin. Now there are almost 180. In Berlin, they now rank in the top three of women working in prostitution, just after Germans and Romanians. And these women we met and who are officially registered had nothing to do with prostitution before. They had perfectly normal jobs, and many of them don't really realize what awaits them in Germany. According to a study by the Coalition for the Abolition of Prostitution, the life expectancy of a prostitute is 40 years. Yara barely survived. Under the influence of a recruiter, she was forced into prostitution for several years. She worked day and night in an apartment turned brothel, isolated from her family and friends. She had to hand over all of her earnings to her pimp. He also forced her to make appearances on television to promote prostitution. The message we conveyed was that everything was consensual, everything was fine. It's a job like any other that allows you to earn a good amount of money, but everything was fake. Yara was sold to another pimp after a few years. She got hooked on drugs and alcohol. 
Despite her legal and official status, she felt in no way protected. The unwritten law of the underworld is that you don't talk, not to the police or to anyone else. But what's for sure is that there's nothing about women's self-determination in prostitution. It's not like I can tell a client, you pay me 100 euros and in return I allow you to do this or that. No, the client has the money and he dictates the terms. And since you have to hand over that money to your pimp, you go beyond your own limits every day, out of fear of not making it. According to a study by a German criminology institute, 90% of women working in prostitution in Germany are controlled by a pimp. For its critics, the law did not emancipate the prostitutes as promised, but it turned Germany into the largest brothel in Europe. We have the reputation of being the Thailand of Europe. Ulrich Rommelfanger contributed to the first comprehensive study ever conducted in Germany on the law regulating prostitution. According to this constitutional lawyer, the law violates the dignity of tens of thousands of women every day. The worst part of all this is that we have moved to an industrialized system. Legalized prostitution has blown up our value system. But we look away. We, the authors of this study, were convinced that policymakers must act urgently. But throwing out the law would require one fifth of the members of federal parliament to vote on sending it for review by the Constitutional Court. Social Democratic MP Leni Bremeyer has made that her mission. She's launched a bipartisan initiative and is doing all she can to change people's mindsets. The women in this industry are under such enormous pressure that most of them don't even dare to turn to associations in case of problems. She's calling for the introduction of the Nordic model, which France adopted in 2016, and which penalizes people who buy sexual services. There are still too many major organizations in Germany repeating all day long that if the Nordic model were applied in Germany, prostitution would be pushed into the underground, and it would then be impossible to protect women. But that's nonsense, because women are anything but protected currently in Germany. With our very liberal legislation on prostitution, we have actually built a highway for human traffickers. But after 20 years, the normalization of prostitution is widely accepted. Only one in five Germans supports it being considered a criminal activity, and its opponents are fighting an industry that generates around 15 billion euros each year in Germany. Thank you for watching, reporters. Do stay tuned for more news coming up on France 24.